Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about arrays more from an intuition point of view. So an array, simply speaking, is a list of data. And it could be all kinds of data. It could be a list of decimal numbers, it could be a list of vectors, maybe a list of objects, and so on. And I think it's useful to imagine this list like you would have a column in a spreadsheet. For instance, here I'm in Google Sheets. I've got this list here. And that's my array. In this case, it's an array of vectors. And because we tend to read from top to bottom, I think I could say that this is the first element and this here is the last element. So these lists are ordered. And this is useful because then we can refer to each cell or element, right? Well, you might think that this is actually the numbering or the indices, as they're called, of these uh, of this array. But it's not quite that because uh, we have to make it a little more complicated because most programming languages tend to start counting at zero. So it's pretty much like this. The first element will be index 0, second element index 1, and so on. And so this is useful because then we can say I want from this array index 4 and then that's what I'm going to get back, right? And I don't know what this S is doing here, I'm going to delete that. Let's look at it more concretely. For instance, I have a sphere here. This is just a regular Maya sphere that I created here from the shelf. And I'm going to tell you that this array actually represents... Uh, oh. ...represents this array here the point positions for this plane. And by the way, this symbol here is going to tell you you've got an array, and you can see this by hovering over it. Look at the bottom. You can see here, array of float 3. So this will give me the array of point positions, and these are the point positions for this uh, plane. But how do I know which of these vertices each index here corresponds to. Well, this is kind of arbitrary. It depends on your geometry and how it was created. Probably also, if you were to import this from another uh, software, it might be different. But what you can do is go to Display, Polygons, um, Component IDs, Vertices. And here we can see that this index 0 here will correspond with this index, this vertex index here and so on. So we can see it's going, well, let's see. This will be minus 3 in x, 0 in y, and 3 in z, or z. And there we are. And so this order, depending on what you're going to do with um, your array, is going to be potentially quite important. I mean, let's do something that you might have seen before in other videos. A lot of times what we like to do is pair up arrays, right? Whether it's add, multiply, or whatever um, operation we perform, we just like to add things, in this case, get point position, add the normal to it. That way we could actually move points along the normal. And it's the same deal with um, the normals. Maybe I can show those two uh, vertex normals. I think I've got this over here. In this case, the normals are all the same because it's a plane. They're all just pointing up. If I put these together, the reason this is going to work is because, well, 
these arrays are ordered the same, meaning this entry and this entry, they're both corresponding to the vertex zero. And that's why when we add them up, we've got a compound here that does this. I can just move them along the normal. And I guess I could make this a little more interesting by changing the normals a little bit. No, normals aren't all the same. And here we can see this works. So, but if I came here, now of course this array isn't correct anymore. I've got different values here. So if I were to shuffle this normals array, I would get something that's very unpredictable. And so whenever you're creating your own arrays, I think you should be aware of how things are ordered. Because sometimes things don't really come out the way you planned. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe you're not pairing up the right um, values or indices, if you will. And, you know, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video. There are a lot of nodes that you can use with arrays. And, uh, well, it's worth having a play with those. Cheers.